session. Uh, our first speaker is Professor Anil Gupta, and he shall be speaking on unleashing for innovative potential of research and development organizations and individuals. I request Dr. Tejal Gandhi for to introduce him. Professor Dr. Anil Gupta, sir, is visiting faculty IIM Ahmedabad and IIT Bombay and Center for Management in Agriculture. He is independent thinker, activist for the cause of creative communities and individuals at grassroots, tech institutes, and any other walk of life committed to make this world a more creative, compassionate, and collaborative place. Professor Dr. Anil Gupta is also a founder of Honeybee Network, Srishti, NIF, and Gyan. Upon finishing his bachelor's degree honors in agriculture, he went on to complete his master's in science, biochemical genetics from Haryana Agriculture University in way back 1974. In 1986, sir earned a PhD in management from Kurukshetra University. This, he had, was ex-vice chancellor of National Innovation Foundation, NIF India, President Shristi Society for Research and Initiatives for Sustainable Technologies and Institution 2003 to till date. He is editor of Honeybee, a quarterly newsletter on grassroots green innovation from 1990 till date. He is secretary of GAN. This is MHRD, this uh, from 1997 to till date. He is member advisory board, Global Innovation Center, UNICEF, New York, during 2015-16. Member board of directors in EDCIL, India Limited, 2013 to, at, till date. Also associated in past with uh, Kasturbhai Lalbhai, chair in entrepreneurship at IIM Andabad. Chairperson. Ravi J. Mathai Center for Education, Innovation, and Chairperson Research and Publication in IIM Ahmedabad. Sir is bestowed upon with several awards and honors. To name a few, Best Researcher at IIM Ahmedabad 2015, Humanistic Management Lifetime Achievement Award by Academy of Management USA, August 2013, PhD honors from this uh, University of Peru. Uh, Doctor of Letters from Central University of Risa in July 2013. Hermes Award, May 2012. European Institute for Creative Strategy and Innovation Award from Paris. He is Padmashri in 2004. Civil Award by the President of India. Adjudged as one of the 50 most influential people in the field of intellectual property rights around the world in 2003. He is this adjudged as one of the star personality of India, uh, not sorry India, but of Asia Business Week, July uh, 2001. He is also a member of many governmental and corporate bodies and is widely published author. He is CSIR Bhatnagar Fellow 2018 to 2021. So, he is, as we have said, founder of Honeybee Network, Sristi, Gyan, NIF. So with this, of course, uh, this is, we can say, very brief. If we speak, it's uh, more than uh, one hour we have to speak no, about, no, sir. No, but no, I can, no. in one line, I can say that I met, he was invited, uh, so many uh, scientists, and I was so lucky enough he had invited me also to join this honeybee meeting, first meeting for the that. Way back, I can say this 15, uh, more than 15 years back. And I heard him on that day. And I can say that because of that thing, we got that Gyati Award in 2013, two times in India. Sir, because your speech on that day, I know that it was so inspiring and really ignited me to do a little bit. So we need your blessings that we can really walk or we can start walking on your path in future. And we can do something for this uh, students, young mind, and we can say overall for India and world. Thank you and welcome, sir, uh, for this first session of EFTP. 
uh, as a keynote speaker. Uh, sir, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have been very kind to have uh, presented a very rich background. What I will do, friends, to you can see my screen, I suppose. Yes, sir. Either my screen is visible. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. sir. Yeah. Uh, I said it before, I'll repeat that an idea that matters does not need to be an ideal. Because many times what happens, uh, because we are not fully clear about an idea, we wait. And in this competitive world, many times we are left behind because somebody else has discovered that. I will also show you some of the platform that we have created, like techpedia.in or gyti.techpedia.in, which have provided a space for individual scholars, students, to uh, compete and apply for awards and also recognition and support for taking their ideas forward. I may mention before we proceed further that November 30th, November 30th is the last date for Sitare Gyati Awards. What is Sitare Gyati Award? Sitare Gyati Awards are given in collaboration with Department of Biotechnology, BIREC, Biotechnology Industry Resistance Council and Sustee. 15 lakh rupees to 15 students are given, is given every year. Now this award of 15 lakh is one of the biggest awards for students. And pharmacy, biotechnology, microbiology, uh, medical devices, all of this, the, anything which can lead to a biotech enterprise, biotech startup in future, may not be immediately, but in, the direction is that if there is a focus on solving a problem, are eligible. So please do not uh, miss this opportunity. Advise your students to apply at BIREC, P -I -R -A -C dot N -I -C dot in. For all life sciences award, you have to apply there. For all other disciplines, of course, at gyati.techpedia.in. Now, Tejal uh, uh, mentioned about Honeybee Network. Uh, Honeybee, briefly speaking, is a movement that started, social movement that started uh, 33 years ago. And uh, various, basically, we learn from the behavior of P. We try to cross-pollinate ideas between among formal, informal, institutional, individual, various verticals of knowledge system. Between formal and informal also means that from people's knowledge and connecting that to professional knowledge. I'll give you some examples. And it is so fortuitous that though Ketan is not here, one of the first product that went out to market and it still is in the market was through uh, Troika. We will, I'll talk about it later. How our knowledge of people led to a product which went to the market. And it was Ketan's confidence in the product that was developed by the lab, Sushi Lab. We are also very keen that all the colleagues who are present here would try to set up uh, whatever name you can give, uh, you can give Honeybee Network Innovation Club, you can give your own uh, institutional club name or whatever. That club should do four things. Search innovation, spread innovation, celebrate innovation, that means invite the innovators to the classroom and sense the unmet social need. This last part is what is the most relevant and poignant for today's session. Scouting, sensing unmet social needs, underutilized resources, unidentified opportunities, and that will take us very far. Uh, this is another competition that we have where anybody can apply till the number 30th is the last date, but we will extend it to December 7, HPN Kriya Award for any individual, any professional, grassroots to global, anybody can apply for that. Now, first submission I would like to make is that health is not just absence of sickness. Health is more than that. Health is about being, well-being. Health is about nutrition. Health is about uh, psychic health, spiritual health, physiological health. And of course, uh, health also means that we should be optimistic. A depressed person is not healthy. So please remember the first indicator that I would like to see of a healthy the individual healthy organization is that they are optimistic, that they have faith in future. If we don't have faith in future, we are not healthy. We are sick to my mind. Because then 
half the problems, half the opportunities will be missed because we are not optimistic enough. So I think it is our responsibility to inculcate in our students this feeling of being, uh, being interesting. Now, how much is experiment? Somebody's mic is open. Can you switch off your mic? Pharmacist experiment, innovate and share. Now, what is design thinking? Design thinking is nothing but using an unmet need as a trigger. Very simple. So there is no need to get uh, intrigued as to what is this new concept. The concept has been there in the mind of all those who have developed real time, real use, actual use, solve pro product of actual need solving problems. When uh, a mother, young mother, mother who has just given birth to a child, finds little discomfort in the stomach of uh, infant, what does she do? She takes a nutmeg, rubs it on a piece of on a stone or a slab with little water, puts it on the navel. And that child gets relief, or it, sometimes she uses asphateria. Now think of it for a minute and ask ourselves a question. That in our culture, in our traditions, we have used navel root as a drug delivery system, which is the modern medicine that we know of, which is the modern medicine that we know of, which is delivered through navel root. Now, this is a question that we should ask. If there's an unmet need of delivering solutions, and if traditional knowledge has found some solution, should formal system continue to treat it as unmet because there is the alternative is by people who are not trained in pharmacy or not in biochemistry or not trained in physiology? Can we learn from those who may have met that need? Maybe suboptimally. So our unmet need, unmet opportunity, unmet resource, underutilized resource, all of these are part of design thinking. Because we should always remember that the solution that we develop has to be utilized, has to be affordable, accessible, and available. Paracetamol may cost 10 pesos, let us say. It is accessible, dispensary is very close to my home. It is affordable, very low cost. But if it is not available, there is no inventory, then what is the point? So please appreciate that our job is not just to develop a product, but also to think about supply chain, which supply chain would be ideal for delivering it to the ultimate user. And that is the reason why the responsibility of the scientist is no more just restricted to their lab or their desk. We also have to now recognize the steps that will have to be taken. And then once we look at sky supply chain, we will also identify the constraint that in our product has. For example, you have heard about Pfizer vaccine. Now Pfizer vaccine requires minus 70 degrees centigrade temperature to be keep to keep it viable. Minus 70 degrees. How many developing countries can provide a supply chain of that quality and that, that level? So naturally, a lot of people have asked this question that will this vaccine be relevant for our country? Maybe in cities, yes, possible. But what about rural areas? So we will have to ask this question as to whether the conditions in which my solution will be utilized by the people, are those conditions compatible with the design and delivery of my product? Will my product stand all the uh, variations in the temperature or for that matter even humidity in some cases? If it can, it's a good product. If it is not, then it's not a good product. So please remember that in areas where moisture is very high, though you must have seen that most of the companies will put a small silica gel or some other adsorbent of moisture. But where moisture level is very high in coastal areas, for example, is that enough if the tablet gets moistened or a drug gets moistened and, and they may develop other problems, maybe difficult to 
use or whatever obviously those conditions will have to be taken care of and i know that pharmacists are very careful about those things and when you formulate drugs you are always able to solve those problems but in future challenges are going to be bigger and tougher challenges will be tougher whether it is vaccine whether it is drugs because we will have to deliver under conditions which are very tough to give an example today when you take a blood sample somebody has to come to home collect the blood take it to the lab then it is tested then advice comes then advice is sent to the doctor the doctor looks at it prescribes the solution and that solution is then dispensed by a pharmacist now this is the change that happens we recognized one innovation this year a micro needle patch by which a micro needle device by which a person can collect the sample and pack it in such a way that it can be sent to the lab without lab person coming to you so even in the most remote areas i can get a blood sample undistorted un uh, polluted uncontaminated and i will be able to then get analysis done so this is there is a need for such solutions which will meet the uh, what gandhi ji said antyodaya antyodaya means uday the development of the person who is in the last in the line antyodaya jo la akhir mein khada hai jo vyakti hai khadi hai uski uski dikkat ko hal karna so when we talk about need whose need we have to ask that question whose need are we trying to meet need of the elite surely they must be met because they also deserve best possible care but then they can afford a very costly solution as well but what about the large number of our common people for whom solution will have to be very rugged so just a few days back there was a new vaccine being developed by a uh, collaborative effort between a scientist of indian social sciences and a startup set up by one of their doctor professors and this vaccine will stay at room temperature 35 degrees centigrade doesn't require any cold to chain that's an amazing solution many people may not have read about it but just look up isc bangalore and vaccine room temperature and you will find that so there are why this why did this vaccine get developed because the problem of supply chain were factored by the designer as a condition as a constraint on the solution so please appreciate that in our country and many developing countries the constraint of the supply chain will have to be factored in the design of the solution otherwise there's no point in saying our solution is very good but it's the delivery system is not working delivery system has to be designed i mean has to be taken into account while delivering solution i remember some very creative solutions have been found and as we move forward i'll tell you uh this relationship between traditional knowledge and the modern science and technology is very critical i know that in many of you in your home have used solutions that your grandmother or grandparents developed i have used it all of us have used it and yet when it comes to giving them a scientific standing scientific basis we sometimes stint we sometimes hesitate we sometimes feel diffident why should we feel diffident it will be absolutely fine if we could develop uh, i was reading yesterday about the ancient women scientist ancient not historical ancient so greek there was a greek lady who had identified this plant artemisia so the artemisin that drug came out from the plant actually this plant was identified by this lady about uh, 200 or 300 bc that means more than 2500 years ago or almost 2300 years ago and she had identified at that time the properties of this plant many of us have not been taught about it but what time what kind of tools people had at that time and why that knowledge has a, is of contemporary importance because the chinese scholar got nobel prize for malaria drug developed from this plant if that lady had not identified this plant and its utility maybe scientists may not have paid attention to so many times our traditional communities have done research 
have identified certain things of use. And our goal then is to find out scientific basis and formulate the solution which will then be available to people at low cost without compromising the effectiveness. I'm not one of those who believe that poor should get a solution of lesser quality and rich should get a better quality. No, I think every human being has a right to life and right to life must be fulfilled with the solutions that are of same quality. There can be no discrimination in this regard. So what am I trying to do? I'm trying to change the context of the discourse of product development. I'm trying to say that the historical context in which, or that's to say the traditional context in which labs worked were we reviewed literature, we found some leads, we developed work, validated them, the student got thesis, MSc or PhD, and the life went on. If you look at number of students that we have been able to train and number of products that we have developed, there wouldn't be a very good relationship. Not even 0.01% of this student thesis are converted into products. What do we do about it? Let me show you a database. And you will see that uh, this database helps us. There are, uh, there are solutions in this database. Just let me show you. And uh, now look at that. So this is the database, techpedia.in. How many projects it has? It has 200,000, 200, 200, 2,4,549, 2,4,549. Now, what are these projects? These projects are done by students. And students, so I just typed pharma to see how many are there. There are about 800 and odd. That obviously means that many of your student projects are not here. But what is the advantage? The advantage is that at a click of a button, we can find out industrial drying system at uh, UICT, synthesis of intermediates, UICT, one of the top labs, uh, chromatographic purification of therapeutic proteins and other biomolecules, enzymes, extraction of pharmaceutically important constituents. Now, UICT gave these projects. We could upload them. So what is the advantage? The advantage is that these students are getting visibility. Now, these are like so many times these projects are half-baked bricks. You look at them, you find them useful. You combine three, four, five bricks, build, start building a wall. So many times the genius lies not just in developing new product, but also in baking the half-baked bricks into a product, into a solution. So maybe your, your genius lies in synthesis or uh, integration of large number of small, small solutions that are available and put them together. Bio-enhanced drug delivery system. So all these solutions are available there. Now, when you ask students to review literature, you ask them to review public literature. But this literature, which is developed by the students, often does not come, does not get published. Many of them don't get published. And the result is then, the so-called gray literature, the ideas of the young minds, minds, yes, students of yours. And now, you can't expect, let's say there are 5,000 colleges uh, of related disciplines. Do you expect a student to go to the website of 5,000 colleges to find out who has done what? No. So why, 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 how, why will, what, what will we do? We'll go there and find out what has been done and look at and then go to the next and find out what has been done in different institutions. It so happens that there are a large number of projects of UICT. Uh, there is also from Getwell Pharmaceutical, there somebody has worked on handling of equipment and install, um, instruments involved in drug production. Uh, this is from Sardar Vallabhai National Institute of Technology, SVNIT, Pharmaceutical Waste Treatment, uh, IIT Kharagpur, Pharmaca Kinetic Model for Lead, lead uh, Uncertainties and Parameter Estimation, uh, somebody from Bishuri, this is Nagpur, VNIT, VNIT, IIT Mumbai, so in a flicker of a second, you're able to map from Allahabad to, to Mumbai to 
Nagpur to Varanasi, BHU, wherever. You can find out, you can map the mind, creative mind of our society, and then see how can these ideas be linked, be improved upon, be contradicted for that matter, or taken into account. Now, this is where our challenge lies. I mean, if you see the Gathi Award that I was mentioning to you, all these awards are listed here. And these awards include medical devices, these include a novel hybrid technology for bio separation. Uh, this Jayesh Kumar Mewada, for example, got selected for the G20 uh, meeting of young mind, young scientists. He got invited to many conferences because the solution here was found to be very interesting for many developing countries. So UN organization invited him. So many times the uh, patterns of drying, for example, is used to identify diseases, nanomedicine approach, anti drug, artisanate via nanomedicine approach, whole range of solutions are available, a whole range of solutions are available. What do you have to do? You have to just go there and search these, these solutions, and then these solutions are available to you. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that let us try to upload the abstracts, I'm not asking for full paper, abstracts of the student project or send it to us, we will upload it. Name of the student, guide of the student, department, university, year, contact email address. Who knows, somebody will from Brazil contact you and say, look, uh, there's a company I have set up, I'm looking for this solution, your student seems to have developed this, can we work together and take this solution to market? Quite possible. Sitting in Anand, you may get a call from Brazil, call from Peru, call, because this database is seen by the people around the world. There is no such other database. You can't find the projects of Stanford and MIT at one place, but you can find the projects of USIT, NIT, SVNIT, IIT, all of them are available at one place. So naturally, this will be very useful for you to take forward. Now let's go further. Let me show you something very simple that you might wonder. All of you have this plant in your home. Uh, this is the one. You have seen this, isn't it? Morning, morning grass. What do you think it is used for? Anybody has an idea? What can it be used for leaves of this grass? During our show, the Atra, I'll tell you about show the Atra, how we discovered this use. But anybody knows about what can it be used for? Morning grass. Anybody? The leaves of morning grass, a plant which grows in almost everybody's garden, everybody's home, in one part or the other. If you come to think of it, we were also intrigued, as you might be. So we were having a show, the Atra. Every summer, every winter, every autumn, we walk. In autumn, we walk with the students of IME, but in winter and summer, anybody can join our walk. 45 walks we have had so far. Every part of the country we have walked. Every single state of the country we have walked. Not every part, but every state. Vaishali mentioned about immunity. Anybody else can mention any other use? Because before I tell you, you should find that there is a validity. And then I will show you the paper on that subject. So you will realize that this lady in Andaman, Nicobar Island, can discover a use which we, the pharmacist for eye improvement, Abhani says. All right. Anybody else? Let me show you. So this is an NIH study that I'm going to share with you, National Institute of Health. This lady was using it for diabetes. And we asked her that we have never heard of it. She said, but I've been using it for years. So my God, if such a low cost material can be used, let me show you this paper so that uh, you can see this. This is the one. Are you able to see it? No, sir. Your screen is uh, now now presenting, sir. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see that. Yes, perfect. 
Yes, perfect, sir. Yeah, so anti diabetic effect of Portulaca, Oliracea, mechanism in diabetic rat, 2016, Indian Journal of Molecular Science, uh, Chinese scientist, incidentally, not Indian. What do I do now? A lady in Andaman tells me about this knowledge. I come, who should I tell? I will tell Tejal. I will tell all of you. Tejal, please put your student. Let us develop some products out of it. Chinese yeah. develop a product. We will be left behind, isn't it? I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want that we should always find Chinese taking lead over us. That's certainly not. Knowledge is our country. We have all this knowledge in our society. We could not develop, but they could develop. Why? Because we are not as respectful of our knowledge. Of our knowledge. They are. Now, can you imagine if every student of our institution had to just spend a, do a small assignment of talking to grandmother and grandparents and write down 10, 15 key insights from their lifetime experiment that they have done to bring up our parents, not us, but our parents, which means at least la last 60, 70, 80 years of knowledge that they have. Will that be lost? Yes. The day they are going, their library is cremated or buried. You know, every whenever an elderly person goes away from this world, a library is cremated or buried, depending upon how what our faith is. But should we let it happen? So I'm saying that need is there. Gujarat is the diabetes capital of India, and India is the diabetic capital of the world, isn't it? So naturally, we need new solutions. And it is being published in a journal published by NIH, National Institute of Health, one of the top institutes of the health in the world, Maryland. So it is not just a street corner journal or a some obscure place where this research has been published. It means that if we ask our students to identify unmet need, underutilized resources, I would like to add that. Underutilized resources is also, should also be part of design thinking. Please don't only, when you identify a need, next question should be, is there an abundantly available resource which I'm not using? This grass is just in front of my house. Why not? Like that, there are a large number of solutions that are waiting to be tapped, and we are not uh, drawing upon them. So what have I tried to do? I'm trying to change the context. And let me show you next one. The screen is visible. Adrian? So let me yeah, show sir. you. Sorry. Sir, make it a slideshow if it is yeah. possible. Yeah. I will do that. yeah. So I will show you how nature can teach us something. How can we learn about designs from nature? As we all know, the nature is very frugal, nature is multifunctional, nature is diverse, nature is resilient. And every design has three things at least form, feature, and functions. How diverse nature is to get can be imagined that when you have a snowfall in mountains and you look at a snowflake under a microscope, it looks like a beautiful earring with a crystallized, it's a crystal. So crystal pattern looks like a very beautiful ring. No two snowflakes have the same structure. No two trees have the same structure. No two fish have the same design. Nature is extremely diverse. It offers us a huge learning opportunity. So what happened? Conrad Lorenz, a Nobel, Nobel laureate, a famous ethologist, German scholar, asked, let us look at feather of all the birds, fins of all the fish, branches of all the trees. Feather of all the birds. Let us look at feathers of all the birds in the world. Fins of all the fishes. Fins of all the fishes. Branches of all the trees. Branches of all the trees. And then he asked a very interesting question. What is the range of angle at which the fin, the feather, and the branch is set to the trunk? What is the range? Any guess?
if you think for a while, you will realize that the my hands, if I take them as feather or as a branch, then I spread them 90 degree. 90. I can't have at zero degree, so about 10 degree or so, 10 to 15 degree, 15 to 19, 90. Entire diversity of the world is covered. Very narrow range of angle explains very huge diversity. Nature has very few design and plays with them all the time. What does it mean? It means that the design principles are not too many. Applying them in different contexts can be very creative. So one student who got an award use mangodi. Mangodi mein kya bolte hain Gujarati mein? Moon ki dal ki mangodi hoti hai na? Sabji banate hain uski? Ajal, what do you call it? Is there a word for that? I don't know. But this you you grind, you soak the moon pulse, then or rudd for that matter, dal, no, this uh, black drum, and then you grind it, and then make small uh, kind of uh, uh, small uh, balls of it, dry it under the sun. Then, if, whenever you want to cook, you can put them in the curry, and the curry is ready. Now, this was used. Vadi. In, huh? It is known as a vadi. Vadi, vadi. Yes. right? In Gujarati, vadi. yeah. yeah. Correct. Vadi. You know, vadi has been used by a student, and then she worked in IIT Hyderabad as a drug delivery system, embedding the drug in vadi. Yeah made it go to the right place, insulated from various acids, and that environment of protein gave it the right kind of chemical, biochemical condition for being available to the system in a much higher quantity and much faster. Now, this is a very creative use, very creative use. What do we say in the time, haldi ko turmeric has to be taken, milk has to be taken with turmeric, because the fat in the milk obviously will might might make a diff the difference to the delivery of turmeric in my body. So there is a there are a lot of wisdom of this kind. There are few simple principles which have been which can be used in whole range of of uh, analogic learning that we can do. So we must remember that a change not monitor the change not desired. The knowledge that we have not tracked is not is the knowledge that we have not used or not promised from. Then Jan was set up in 97, this was the triangle. And the need of the hour is that every institution, every department should try to adopt this triangle. And we will be very happy to work with you on that. What is the triangle? Innovation, investment, and enterprise. So you have an innovation in your department. It has to become a business, either by your own student or faculty or by somebody else. And it needs investment of intellectual uh, caliber, material, financial. So this to us uh, appeared in 1997 as a golden triangle. An unmet need, underutilized resources, underutilized skills, repurposed materials, need for environmental care, impatience with inertia, desire to improve livelihood, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, and playfulness. All these drivers are drivers of grassroots innovations, the bottom-up innovations. Unmet need is on the top. Underutilized resources. Underutilized skills. Not everybody is good in everything. And of course, repurposed materials. You know that how many drugs are being repurposed for COVID-19? Yeah. People are saying that those who were vaccinated for TB or some other uh, diseases in our country have developed immunity, even against COVID. Our recovery rate is one of the highest in the world. Our mortality rate is one of the lowest, unfortunately, despite the recent spike. So what are we saying? That there are ways in which we can interpret the existing solutions with a new lens. And of course, we have to be impatient or looking for these solutions and generate solutions. Now, let me come to the solution. That is a small story that I went told you that I will show you. If Ketan was around, and I don't know whether he's able to see that from home, 
But Ketan, this is a tribute to our partnership and our friendship. This drug came to the market. How did it come? So these were the committees. Amrath Bhai, Shankar Bhai, Rawal Mehsana, Kanju Bhai, Kakadiya Bhai, Bhoya Dang, Punjab Bhai, Puja Bhai, Dhabi Savar Kantha, Kishan Bhai Savar Kantha, Lakshman Bhai Panch Mahal, Leela Bhai Rawal Patan, Lakha Bhai, Lakha Brother. Now, please imagine the probability of these people meeting together would have been very, very low. How would they know each other? They all had some solution for skin. But by itself, none of them probably were as optimal as they could be when they were blended together. That's what our lab did. Uh, it so happened that the secretary of Ketan was having eczema. So when this idea was discussed, he told his secretary heard it. He said, can we try? He tried and he got relief. That convinced Ketan that this is something useful. He has marketed that in many countries, Malaysia, he got license for Brazil and many other places. What I'm trying to say is that, and even doctors from the US have taken this because they found that the available solutions were not there. In once I went to New York for a meeting, one of my common friend uh, introduced me to a, a very uh, major company's CEO, founder, the publishing company he came he flew to meet me and he said i had to hold the ice rod in my hand in the night there was such a trouble to keep the irritation in control and i could now sleep with the help of this medicine because it kept, kept, gave me relief it did not cure as well but it gives relief instantaneously that was the, the strength of the solution so these committees were invited at the launch function the representatives and what does what do they get every year whatever royalty we get not a very great amount but certainly whatever we get is shared with all the communities through a money order every year every year so this is a model this is a model that can be applied very easily if we all can work together identify the unmet need Identify the underutilized skills, underutilized resources, underutilized knowledge, blend it, use the best of the modern science in developing these solutions, these formulations, find an industrial partner or entrepreneurial partner or set up our own startup and go to the market. That's the way to go. That's the way to go. Gujarat government under startup policy through Gyan has given up to 10 lakhs to a young startup. And if some of you who are not part of Gujarat, but want to have some link of your value chain in Gujarat, you're also eligible. Gujarat invites entrepreneurs or innovators from all over the country. So it's not necessary that only the students or young people or the faculty of Gujarat can apply for startup scheme. So long as you have some important link of value chain being completed in Gujarat, which is not too difficult. So if you have a partnership with that Samuel Pharmacy College, then you are eligible. So it is possible now to attract ideas, innovations, and even the unmet needs from different parts of the country. The salt workers, for example, uh, have a huge problem in their feet when because they get from barefoot they turn the salt for drying it purposes they also develop boils because of heat moisture and of course salts so a lot of such needs waiting are waiting to be resolved there's no question about it and how do we resolve them so if a change is not military, the change is not desired, as I mentioned earlier. And I will uh, mention four different institutional arrangements. How do we how do we create organizations or how do we create conditions in the organizations, R and D organizations, which will make breakthroughs and at the same time be purposive in nature? So there are Two dimensions, technological platforms, known, unknown, 
domain characteristics known unknown if both are known that means platform is available and domain characteristics is on uh, is also known then these are incremental innovations as you can see in this green one adaptive trial user led modifications we ask users of the solution to join as a part of our and team they give us feedback viagra is a good example which was a side effect and that became a drug there are large number of such examples when a new use is found in our country we don't have patents on new use but in america have europe has so for example aspirin was known for headache when it was found useful for blood as a blood thinner that was a new use that was an incremental innovation old product old method of manufacturing but new application so if both are known then we we are talking about incremental innovations and these can be taken care of through conventional incubation process where you handhold you give some guidance and there is not a very tough challenge here to scale up but if domain practice is unknown but platform is known then r and d with external experts is required you need new arrangement new actors to be brought into the r and d team so for example if you need to develop a device for say patch a macro little patch for delivering a drug then you need people who are knowledgeable about that discipline and maybe in your department or in your college such experts don't exist but you have the solution which can be in very low quantity through dermal infusion can solve the problem you can even have them uh, for example insulin dispensation now there are solutions available which can track your sugar level and then release the quantity of insulin that is required and keep your sugar in control so there you need ng bio engineers you need medical device experts and you need other partners to work with to be able to make your uh, solution or your drug or your formulation to be used when product development is required that means the technological platform is unknown the domain the conditions in which it has to be used they are known then we have to go for new product development and we have to amplify the form feature and function we should all remember of course you know better than i do because that's your discipline that side effect is nothing but unintended target once pankaj bhai invited me in kerala on a foundation day lecture and i said to pankaj bhai i said pankaj bhai is the founder of kerala that is kerala so i said uh, can you give me data of your rejected molecules he said what will you do i said maybe you rejected because their efficacy was low say that 10% level of significance they might be effective but at 5% level of significance they were not so i would look at that data again and i don't mind if a very low cost solution is available which is only 80% effective or now we are talking about solutions which may be less effective but they are they are able to take up our improve our condition today news there was a news that one particular drug helps in recovery 3 days faster than otherwise now 3 days faster is a good thing when we have no solution any solution that improves the condition of the patient is good one so from the data i might find that yes it is useful it is not better than the existing solution but it gives me a choice so if there is a mutating virus for which no one solution will stay valid for long time i need more lot of choices so you can redefine the way products have to be developed not every product should be effective 99% of the time if there is no adverse and what is the adverse effect sometimes the adverse effect is what is of more importance than these target and i can repurpose that molecule from the target for which i had intended to a new purpose for which i was going to take and the fourth one the red one is most interesting red one is where both are unknown the technological platform is unknown the domain is unknown and you need to really come out with a paradigmatic shift a new approach a, 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 a departure from conventional approach what our people may have tried to do will not work anymore and we need a sanctuary model sanctuary is as you know in wildlife sanctuary there is lot of chaos inside 
order outside incubation center there's order inside and chaos outside why what do you mean by chaos inside chaos inside meaning freedom flexibility scholars need a lot of freedom students need a lot of freedom and we have somehow been used to uh, spoon feeding and sometimes being very strict very authoritarian in dealing with the students i remember once dr mushirka was telling me this story he used to travel as dgcsr every weekend to pune to work with his phd students at ncl national chemical laboratory so once he took the issue of new scientists on the cover page there was a gel and he showed it to his student and she said well i had also seen such a gel so he said why didn't you tell me but it was so different from what we were doing i thought it is an error oh my god dr mushuga said we could have been on the cover page now many times when such a liberal guide like dr mushuga could have such a situation where a student was not able to recognize the oddity we have to cultivate this capacity in our students to look for odd observations look for odd results look for observation which are not following the trend we have too much trend oriented trend line anything beyond the trend line the outlier is thrown away is considered as a noise but that may be the signal the so called outlier is where the knowledge is where the breakthrough will come that is the product may be potential product so we should encourage our students when they are working on a problem where both are less known domain is not known the platform is less known such as covid 19 for example in such situations it will be useful to study and locate solutions that may be helpful by giving more freedom by looking at odd observations so there is no there is nothing like failure i mean in experiment nothing fails before i proceed further let me stop here because uh, i should get some questions otherwise i'll keep on i may go into far more detail there are many models of innovation i would have been happy to discuss them but before i proceed if there are any comments any questions then i can take them how much time do we have they live uh, still uh, 15 minutes 15 minutes so let us take some questions before i proceed further yes questions uh, from yes ma'am uh, yeah we have one question from our one of our participant uh, how to make uh, academic projects into viable market products yes that's a very relevant question and a million dollar question because everybody has to ask that question and hence find an answer i would say that again just as we said unmet need of the user unmet need of a company which is the company which might be interested in the product that we are developing so i remember when we were developing herbal pesticide we have developed many herbal pesticides some of them were marketed to a company matrix bioscience in hyderabad some years ago now they were needing some solutions for non chemical pest management and we had some solutions so their unmet need farmers unmet need public policy makers unmet need and our unmet need the labs unmet need coincided converged so we need to identify the potential partners who are looking for solution in the same space in which we have a solution that's one possible way of finding the potential partner yeah yep. hello and that yes yeah somebody wanted to say something no no sir continue sir please okay. yeah we yeah. are all so if uh that's a good point patel uh, darshan i will come to your question very well just quickly in a minute so one way is to identify the need so let me show you one example of uh, if i have that let me write down uh yati and there is an award that we gave uh so i can now mention that uh 
can see that with this cross-linked antibacterial hydrogelase Tejal's solution, uh, Tejal's student solution. Then, uh, uh, these are all pharma products, projects in the, uh, maybe I should go to the, so this was a, uh, uh, right here, I can show you. So this was a project where I can now mention Ketan was one of the reviewers. And we had a debate among the reviewers. Because uh, this was the product. From Andhra University, College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Vishakapatna. Not one of the top leading institutions. But he has developed a multifunctional granulator to prepare dried spherical granules. Now, the production you mentioned about need of industry. Ketan could say that, look, yeah, this process costs us a lot. And this is a wonderful machine, very well designed. As a pharma company person, I can tell you that this will be very useful for the industry. Somebody else was saying, but then there are other machines. He said, yes, there are machines, but they're very costly. And here is a case of a very well-designed machine. And then he said, so therefore, we had to go by, we had to give a little more weightage to uh, industry feedback than academic feedback. And we selected him. So many times, uh, the need of an industry can be an important driver of solution, no doubt about it. How do we find these needs? Obviously. Uh, let me just say, sorry. Let me show you. This is one solution, and then yeah. So let me let me go back. So what I'm did you could you see the diagram of the picture? Did you see the machine? You couldn't see. Let me try one second. No, sir. Please share that. Uh, are you able to see the book, award book? Yes. Sir, yes. Now we are able to see. Yes. So let me show you this. Are you, if you are able to see, then you will be able to see now again. Let me show you. So this was the project. Can you see this? Yeah. Multifunctional. That's right. That's right. So he was from Andhra University College of Pharmacy Sciences. The guide, I don't know whether the guide is by any chance in this program, Professor K. V. Ramana Murthy. And this project was reviewed by several experts and i'm sharing this off just as a part of learning value because i'm not supposed to reveal who were the reviewers but at least one of the reviewers was a person from industry who saw this machine design as you can see here which made spherical granules and he said this is extremely good because available solutions are very costly, and this is, seems to be well designed. This is micro controlled. It has a good display panel. I can decide the size of the particle, size of the shape that I want, the speed, flow rate, etc., etc. Depending upon the material of which I'm making granules, I can set the parameters and get the right kind of granules from this. And there were many other uh, properties for which this machine could be used. Uh, but certainly, pharmaceutical was one of the top applications. So this is an example where the unmet need of the industry, several industries in this case, could. So there was a wet mixing solution, granulator mixing, drying process was there, and there were different separation processes were there. So what I'm trying to say is that it is possible that uh, the need of the industry can also be a very good driver for solution. And uh, there is no doubt that we should uh, uh, 
So let me show you one more case of uh, I think the Pharma innovation that have got award. Let me show you. And I hope you are able to see them. So you will get an idea as to how do we select and uh, just one second. Yes, I hope you can at least see the titles of these. Let me show. again and I can show it to you. Yes, here it is. So can you see this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So these are eight of the uh, pharma. There are some typing mistakes. Please don't pay attention. My colleagues had to develop it in five minutes, so I didn't give them much time. But uh, user-friendly, affordable device for self-blood microsampling I gave you, I mentioned to you earlier. I think it is from Niper and Gandhinagar. Uh, this was a very interesting solution that I told you that somebody can take one's own sample and send it by post or by normal means of communication, postage or courier to the lab and can be done. So the, the cost of sending a person to a remote area, collecting sample, bringing it back, properly preserved, all that problem has been solved by this particular solution. Similarly, uh, intranasal spray formulation for treatment of Alzheimer. In fact, nasal, even uh, Troika has come out with a nasal uh, formulation for vitamin B12 uh, because nasal root apparently has not been explored as much as it could. Anti-pesticidal dirt gel, you know, workers who spray pesticide, their skin gets affected. So this gel saves the skin from the adverse effect of the pesticide. A very useful solution for a working class, for poor people. Protease, uh, proteasome activation for Parkinson, novel strategy to block malaria transmission, uh, various kind of obstructing sleep apnea. There is a small device developed for that. Uh, Therancetic narrow medicine for brain cancer. So a lot of number of such examples I just mentioned to you because I wanted that you get an idea that we are getting there is a competition surely for projects from pharma sector but many of them are meeting a need which many other people may have ignored so when a student asks an unconventional question it would be a good idea to encourage the student to see uh, how do we increase the collaboration between academia and industry first thing i would request is to upload these abstracts of your projects on tech media because industry can then find out and contact you that's the first thing I would suggest. There are 200,000 projects. Add your 200, 500,000, whatever they are. For last three, four years, you can upload. Doesn't matter because it is not only the student's work that is being seen, but also the guide's work. The guide name is there. A student has passed out four years ago and may be working in a company, may not be interested in that project anymore. But the guide is interested. And I need a guide. I need to find out a scientist who can solve the problem that I'm facing. How do I find out the scientist? Do I go to 5,000 colleges? I will look at the project that is close to my need and find out who is guided that project. He's my academic friend, academic partner. That's the way to find academia. So industry needs you, you need industry, but both are not having a common platform to be able to match each other's need. And I'm saying the Techpedia is a very viable platform where you can actually look at and search for that. I mean, if you go to uh, Techpedia and you will look for solutions that students have found out uh, let us see i mean uh, food technology textile look at biotechnology biomedical engineering 
So biotechnology, there are a lot of solutions that uh, designing a novel biopesticide, for example, from tester or uh, a development of effective formulation for the protein hydro hydrolyzide. Now this is from VVP Engineering College Rajkot. Possible? Why not? Now if somebody is looking for that, they Engineering Rajkot College may not be in the top list of uh, what you are going to look for, but if a person is there in that college who has expertise in solving a problem that I'm facing, then a market for merit has been created. Please appreciate market of, for merit. Merit is distributed. College may be small, professor may be big. College may be small, mind may be big. This notion that big mind exists in big colleges, I don't agree with. Though I have taught in IMA for 33 years, I can tell you that I have discovered and that's why we did Techpedia to find out that guides as well as students. Guides who are solving real problems, but nobody knows about them. How would people know them? Industry doesn't have time to read your papers. They will search on the Google and they don't find you. You don't exist for them. But our database makes it possible for you to be discovered by someone who's looking for a solution. And then if you're guided that some students in that field, they would ask for whether that student is interested, then they might hire the student. So even the employment, employability of the student will go down, go up because of this process. And at the same time, the market will be created for your skill. You may be hired as a consultant to solve their problem. And therefore a solution may be developed. So I would say that the platform for industry academia is available. You can please use it the way you want. Uh, you can upload the projects. You can upload the problems on which you are working. You can also upload your requirement that we are looking for industry for these molecules or these kind of solutions. And we will post it on our website and publicize it. Who knows that somebody might approach you. So please think about both ways and then ask your students to do three things. Every student should identify at least one unmet need. Every student who's at home at the moment during the online training, they just please give this assignment. I'll send you the three questions. You can send it to all the sure. students. Every student should talk to the grandparents, grand uncles, and record at least five to 10 practices that they follow, which are currently not in use. Even if one new product comes out of that, you know, exercise has started purpose. Second, identify the unmet need. I give you an example. In IIT, I was, I'm teaching a course with uh, Chaku. 200 students are there in design, in the design center. It's a course on design, technology, and innovation. And I gave the same assignment to them. So one of the, uh, the problem was elderly. Problems of elderly, they had to find out. So one student said, sir, when my grandfather has to get up from the court, he has to put a lot of effort. Now, of course, the problem is also height of the cot. Sometimes height is low. When height is low, your knee is not at 90 degree. It is at 120 degree. And at that time, the knee has to use more pressure to, to lift you up. So that's partly the design problem. But partly it could also be my knees are weak. And, my, and we all know that uh, one of the mineral, I didn't want, I didn't get into that part of the discussion that minerals are very important means of solving problems. So boron is a very important uh, ingredient uh, of the metabolic pathways which have influenced the arthritic pain. And the local varieties of maize get you four times more boron than the traditional varieties. Sorry, traditional varieties get you four times more than hybrid maize. Now in Panch Mahal, in Dohao, in that area, we get some of the traditional rain-fed area. We have local varieties of maize. That become functional food. Now it will not be sold as commodity. It will be sold as functional food for people who have an arthritic problem. So farmers who grow, who will do this? Somebody has to establish by research, isn't it? So I will say that we need new kinds of solutions. We need uh, to solve problems, of course, of the industry. Industry is also, industry's problem are ultimately the problem of customers because why are they solving those problems? Because somebody's demanding that solution. Any other comment before you come to close this? Yes, part? sir. There I is one question, question from one of the participants. 
regarding yeah. uh, what is the acceptance level of people for the traditional drugs because most of your in research and innovations have been done in in uh, ayurvedic area or herbal area so what is the acceptance level of people we have done a study once we did a program three tier program for ayush um, we got people from all over the country in imi i done this program when uh, sujata was the secretary of ayush and uh, Shelja was Secretary of Irish, very, very dynamic. So he did a found that when it comes to TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, in some countries, for example, Australia, one in five person, oh, sorry, uh, 35 to 40 percent people have used alternative medicine, and one in five person has used Chinese medicine. When you ask them whether they have used Ayurvedic medicine, the proportion is very, very poor. Ayurvedic industry has not globalized the science-based evidence of the product along in the literature. The TCM has done that. Traditional Chinese medicine provides you scientific papers, references, when it makes the literature for each drug. So their drugs developed from traditional knowledge have gone far more in the global market, far, far more than Indian traditional knowledge. And there are many people in our country who will say, where is the need to provide evidence? These are self-proven and so on and so forth. No, I think the consumer's interest is in finding out scientific validation. You have to provide them the references of those validation. There's a huge scope now. How many of us, how many of you are using Kadha in the morning for immunity? Tell me, honestly. I'm sure a large number of you are using Giloy and Ashwagandha. I don't know whether you're using. I don't. I'm using. I'm telling you honestly. I'm using it every day morning and evening. I'm taking Haldi Kadud. I'm turmeric milk. I'm drinking every day morning and evening. So I'm a user of traditional medicine because I think my immunity will get boosted if I use milk with turmeric. And I will advise you all to take Giloy and Ashwagandha tablet in the morning and evening because that boosts immunity. Now, this is not just I use advice. The government of India has advised this. Formally, first time they have given formal advice of Ayush medicines for boosting immunity. Because in immunity boosting properties, the Ayurveda has tradition, has tradition knowledge has much greater strength. So I think the COVID-19 has done very lot, lot of harm, but it has done one good thing that a lot of people have become conscious of improving their immunity rather than only curing their problem. And I think that is keeping us, even if our situation is under control to some extent. Our number of cases have come down to 40,000 per day from 90,000 at one time. So all, overall in the country, our curve is going down for the last six weeks consistently. Last week has been a spike, unfortunately, after Diwali. And immunity boosting solutions, herbs, formulations are having a heyday today in the marketplace. You ask anybody who's manufacturing these products and they will tell you that they can't cope with the orders. So there's something happening right at this moment and I'm very happy about it. Sir, so I, I, have I, I would conclude by saying that uh, the Sir, can I can I have one uh, more question? Uh, sir, uh, actually, second speaker is with us, so not to worry that uh, uh, we have already taken permission from second speaker that we can uh, go for discussion. Sir, I have I found normally like we we develop one uh, very good uh, antacid from herbs. Uh, or if we can say functional food also, that uh, the major problem that we are always facing that the synthetic molecules sometimes that are available that are so cheap and whenever we are developing molecules or we can say the uh, formulation from herbs that are comparatively quite expensive. This is one problem we are facing. And second is that is uh, so many times we are facing problem of this collection, particularly and standardization of these herbs. So uh, these are the two major challenges that we face because 20 years we are working in this area to keep our products in market. We are facing these are two problems. Can you just give us this uh, some idea? For this? On the second problem first, because uh, that is a million dollar problem. Everybody is suffering from that problem. We had a meeting with the uh, Gujarat Medicinal Plant Board uh, director and other colleagues recently and also there's a new university for organic agriculture that has been set up so we had the vice chancellor of that university with us and the challenge was that uh, you obviously don't want pesticide sprayed herbs 
so that is one i mean in, in order to increase production if somebody has used chemical pesticide to keep pest away and increase production then the residues will affect the quality of the drug that you make out of them so uh, this is one area where organic cultivation is most necessary second is that we still do not have protocol for sustainable extraction so if there's a clump of a grass that we are using should we cut should we dig all the five clumps from one point and leave all the five another place for propagation in the next season or should we take three from here and three from there or two from there all these methods have not yet been properly developed by the forest department or even by the botanist so that's a need for our of the hour that what is a sustainable extraction approach for herbs from the wild so that our resource is not depleted third is that we have not paid attention to the fact that the soils soil nutrient play an important role in the plant nutrient Okay. We did a study of two villages with high chronic disease in Panchmahal and two with low chronic disease. And we did a study of soil health, plant health, animal health, and human health, all the four levels. And we found that copper was one element which discriminated most the less chronic to more chronic. Mm -hmm. Now, we all remember that the water in copper vessel was an advice of the elders for a long yeah. time. But this was the first evidence we got. We analyzed the soil, we analyzed the fodder, we analyzed the food, we analyzed the animal blood, we analyzed the human with the help of 15 doctors, uh, volunteer doctors who were there in our team. And we could then establish this. So I'm saying that the role of sampling of herbs from the region which are rich in mineral, that is dry land, mountains, is better than in highly uh, leached soil which are devoid of nutrients uh, so sampling is a very important part the ideally one should collect raw material and then dry it rather than taking a dry powder because you don't know what is there in the dry powder so i would suggest that tribal people should be formed into as a partner in this program and they should get good benefits for sustainable extraction and then they should be involved that's what the first part is the cost now if you look at cost of hospitalization you know one episode adverse episode of health and your five years savings are gone in a lower middle class family so i think we have to communicate the cost in a manner that is appropriate so we should tell people that look this cost is not measured only in the price of the drug it is also measured in the price in the cost of hospitalization or cost of the disease occurring and then treating, getting uh, hospitalized because that cost was not added into the uh, lack of preventive health, so to say. I mean, we don't pay as much attention to our preventive health as or to the curative health. But uh, I would say that you, and also endorsement matters. When I say that I'm taking Giloy and Ashwagandha, at least five or six people among the audience might start taking, thinking that if professor is taking, we should take. And I will be happy if they do that because it's, it's the right thing to do at this moment. Uh, I can say that the other day there was a meeting with National Biodiversity Authority Chairperson Dr. Mathur, and I told him that, look, are you taking it? He said, no, I'm saying, I said, I'm sending it to you. You have to take it. Now, when there are influencers who have following, who have large social media presence, take help of these people in creating awareness about their products. And hopefully their followers then will listen to what you're saying. I will be happy to promote your products. Uh, just oh, send thank you. Send me the yeah. site. I'll post on my Facebook. I'll post on my Twitter. I've got 50,000 followers, 50, 60,000 followers. At least they will get to know about your work. And then let us see what happens after that. So thank you so much for thank you, sir. the interaction that I've had. And I hope that you will, all the members of the course, will send the abstracts of their student projects with the guide's name and other thing to us because I would like you to be visible on this platform. Sir, sir, can you share this email address for uh, sending this uh, abstract and everything to Techpedia? Yes, yes, yes. I will. I will tell you that you should uh, just a minute. Uh, you can send it to. Uh, let me let me share the blank slide and then uh, I will write down the. Mm 
can i write on the chat yeah sir yeah that might be better that may be faster so very chat uh, no this is not i saw the chat here the three dots uh, or i can try here Um, where is the chat? On right side, sir. If you just scroll on right side, there is a chat box. Is there? Yeah. You can click that and. Okay, okay. I can see that. I yeah. Can see that. If you'll keep click, then you will find this. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So I yes, I saw a chat just now. Let me try to. Let me try to chat, 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 full screen. Turn on caption. This is the one. For some reason. Or, uh, or sir, can you yeah, just. I got, uh, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. DYTI dot media at the rate. Uh, search the dot org this is one address or if somebody wants to send me directly then anil g anil g at the rate ground dot org and uh, for HB and kriya the award that i mentioned those awards are uh, here and for uh sitare gathi award of 15 lakh for our students november 30th is the last date you have to apply there at virec dot nic dot in so for uh, uh, one, one Yapi Award in Life Sciences of 15 lakh each, 15 awards. Uh, those awards for that you must apply not at Yapi site, uh, but at Bayrek site at Bayrek dot nic dot in. Yes. What was the other question? I think Sorry. all the questions have been uh, have been uh, answered by you because many of the questions were very similar. So there is no point in again putting up those no, questions. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for thank answering you. all our queries and for sharing the so address much. where we can put our future queries. Thank you for giving beautiful and contemporary examples for the creative innovations, how contradictory situations can lead to problem solving innovations. You also told about how we can identify our needs and find answers from our daily routine items. Thank you so much, sir. We are all encouraged for, uh, uh, you also encouraged the delegates for uh, going for startups and for being entrepreneurs also. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I will now. We are moving I'll stay in touch, sir. Yeah.